Hello YouTube! Today's video is the second part of my new series, in which I document the progress on my largest cosplaying project so far. A full costume of Tali Zora from Mass Effect I'm preparing for my girlfriend. In this episode I am tackling the hardest part of the helmet, the visor. Not only does it have a complex curvature, but it's big, purple and mirrory. Each one of these aspects causes its own problems and for years I just assumed it's impossible for me to get it done. Finally though, I decided it's time to hack my way through the obstacles. Let's see how it went. How do we deal with the complex curvature? As far as I know, there is only one feasible manufacturing technique I could use. Vacuum forming. Unfortunately, I didn't have a vacuum former, nor have I ever used one. When I checked the prices, even the tiny vacuum formers were way beyond my budget, and the big ones, which would allow me to actually pull the visor, were even more expensive. The only solution was to make one on my own. Not to go bankrupt during this project, I set myself an arbitrary budget of 15 euro or 17.5 US dollars. Can I build a homemade functional vacuum former for less than 15 euro? Hell yes, I can! The first step to making the vacuum former on a shoestring budget is to get rid of the heating element and the vacuum pump. Many people already have these parts covered as long as they have their regular kitchen, oven and a vacuum cleaner. Just make sure to use this style of a vacuum cleaner, because this one wouldn't really work too well. As always, it all started digitally in SketchUp. I designed the frame of the former out of aluminium corner profiles and the body of the former out of MDF panels. The former is just the right size to fit in the oven of my kitchen and the work area is large enough to form Tali's visor. I've made the parts so they fit on a 400 by 800 mm MDF sheet, since that's the smallest size I can get at my local DIY store. The former takes 340 by 410 mm sheets, since that's the size which nicely fills the PETG available at the local plastics warehouse. When the model was ready, I bought all the necessary materials. MDF, aluminium corner profile, 8 angle mounts, D-profile door gaskets and uh, some consumables I already had at home, M3 bolts and nuts, small office clips and some wood glue. So far so good. I started my work with the frame. When I assembled it, it turned out a bit too wobbly for my taste. Uh, it worked when operated carefully, but I decided to use the one leftover euro in my budget to add an extra aluminium profile and reinforce the top half of the frame. As you can see, the difference was huge and I managed to close the budget at the predicted 15 euro. When the frame was ready, I started my work on the main box of the former. I cut all the pieces to shape with a handheld saw and glued them together with wood glue. I was afraid some air would escape through the joints, but in practice this effect is negligible and all works fine. For the top part I had to drill 374 holes by hand. To my surprise it didn't take as much time as expected and the final effect was pretty good. To have a better seal around the formed plastic I also added some regular door gaskets around the work area. In the back I drilled a port for the vacuum cleaner. Having the vacuum former ready I only needed one more thing the vacuum forming back. As I mentioned in the beginning, Tali's visor is quite large. This meant that the back also had to be large. The only available manufacturing technique that would allow me to make a back precisely enough was 3D printing. And as you probably know, uh, 3D printing of large objects is not really a good idea. It took almost 48 hours just to print the back out of black PLA and it consumed over 1 kg of filament. I modeled the back in Blender. On my Thingiverse you can find two versions of it. One with extra air tubes which suck the plastic into the creases and one without them. As promised, all the files I used for printing of Tali's helmet are available on my Thingiverse for free. 
The Arduino code for the electronics can be found on my Arduino project hub. The license allows for any non-commercial use. I printed the version of the bag with the tubes. Unfortunately, the print volume of my printer is quite small, so I had to split it into four parts. If you can avoid having joints on your bag, please do so, because it's quite hard to hide them on the final part. Once you turn on the vacuum, the joints suck in whatever filling you have used, and the joints show up, even if you have filled and sanded them down really well. The top of the bag needs to be very smooth, so I had to sand it down, prime it with acrylic, and fill in any holes with putty spray. Then the back was polished and I checked whether it really fits the rest of the helmet. After some more priming and polishing, the back was ready for vacuum forming. I covered it with baby powder so it doesn't stick to the plastic and put the frame with the PETG sheet into the oven. Once I saw that the plastic started to droop down below the bottom of the frame, I turned the vacuum cleaner on took out the frame and hoped for the best. To my surprise, it all worked perfectly the first try. Due to its mass, the PLA bag didn't even heat up much uh, from the hot PETG, and I was able to pull many visors one after the other and the book held uh, really, really well. Due to the geometry of the bag, it was also really easy to separate the visor from the form. One important note on the vacuum forming plastic though. During the first material trials, instead of PETG, I was trying to use the regular PET. I wasn't able to get good parts out of it though. Due to a slight chemical difference, a normal PET first melts in the oven and then immediately crystallizes. The crystallized PET turns milky white and it becomes too hard for the vacuum form. As you can see, this resulted in severe wrinkling, and of course you cannot see anything through it at all. Stick to the PETG. Ok, so I had the visors now, but how do I turn them purple? The problem with PET and PETG is that they are very resistant chemically. That's why they are used in all sorts of packaging. I did dozens of material tests of different fabric dyes, lacquers and spray-on paints, but nothing I tried seemed to work. That's when I heard of iDye Poly, designed for polyester fabric coloring. Polyester is basically is the same thing as PETG, so in theory it should work with my visor. I heated up some water in a pot which I don't intend to use with food ever again, and I added the iDye packet together with activator. It was crucial to keep the temperature constantly between 60 and 63 degrees Celsius. Anything above 64 degrees would deform the visor immediately, and below 60 degrees the dying effect would be too weak. I also turned on the stove ventilation, since the vapors coming out of the pot were quite nasty. When my solution was ready, I carefully hung the visor inside and left it for around 7 minutes. I hung it in a way so it didn't touch the sides or the bottom of the pot. Any contact point would show on the final part. Occasionally I would mix the solution to get an even finish, and I was careful not to scratch the visor while mixing, because it would also leave a mark. After the 7 minutes, I took the visor out and rinsed it in ice cold water to stop the dyeing process. Be careful while transferring the visor out of the pot, since any drop of the dye solution will permanently color every plastic in your kitchen purple. Ok, so the visor was ready, but how to make it a one-way mirror? I just took the finest droplet spray on silver paint I had at home and very gently applied a thin mist on the back of the visor. Of course, I also masked the front with masking tape and a paper towel. The silver layer was just thin enough to give a mirror shine, while still allowing the wearer to see everything from the inside. After I glued the visor in, the helmet just needed some foam pads for the fitting, and it was ready to go. 
The first swing we did was the test of the emergency induction port. This it's green. With the functional emergency induction port, you will never get thirsty during a mission. I really like the final looks of the helmet and can't wait for the rest of the costume to be ready. Stay tuned for the next episode in which we will start the work on Talis and Viro suit. Maybe we'll even manage to do some sewing on this vintage sewing machine we have. Thanks for the watching and I'll see you next time. Give us a like.